Hello students, welcome to La Excellence. Welcome to day 8 Kalam program which is aimed at completing the syllabus and helping students to have clarity over the topics which they are covering. So guys, the topics that were discussed in this was distribution of key natural resources across the world, factors responsible for the location of primary, secondary and tertiary sector industries in various parts of the world. So, let us see the first question which was given. The amount of gas in gas hydrates is estimated to exceed the volume of all conventional gas resources. In this context, explain about the availability of reserves of gas hydrates in India and the challenges involved in its production. Now, if you look at such type of questions, one thing you will feel is uh, it's not there in any NCRT books how to go about with this. You should be aware that these topics are associated with current affairs. Any new resources that are available will be asked in the exam. So just think these type of questions are giving you more information rather than thinking that like, you know, you are not getting the source or from where exactly you need to read about these topics. So, to begin with, first of all, we should know what are these gas hydrates. So, guess these gas hydrates are the gases associated with the ice crystals and are normally present in the continental shells of different countries. In India, it is found in Bay of Bengal, which is extremely important for us. It is present in Eastern Shore. It is present in Western Shore and it is also present in Andaman and Nicobar. But it is believed that especially near the KG Basin, you have good amount of gas hydrates present. And these gas hydrates, they are present in different parts of the world. But there is no technology to extract it. In India, these gas hydrates are associated with the coarse grains that are actually present near the KG Basin. Now, when you have this coarse grains whose size is much bigger, there is high possibility that extraction of this would be easier. That is what the US scientists are saying. And this was found with the help of US, Japan and Indian scientists working together. And uh, still, there is a lot of confusion about its economic viability. So, India, which is one of the major importing countries, oil importing countries, if it gets something of this sort would be extremely helpful, but it also requires the required technology for that to do so. So, that's where this question comes into picture. Challenges involved is mostly associated with the technology and the viability of extraction, nothing more than that, but it's more about the availability of reserves, where are they present? As I told you, it is present in the eastern, western and Andaman and Nicobar regions. So this is all you need to talk about this particular question. This is more factual. Exclusive rights over continental shelf are not just for strategic reasons, but to get hold over the resources in the shelf region. So as you are aware, EEZs will extend it till continental shelf. That's what they're trying to tell. In the light of this statement, enumerate the available resources along the continental shelf. I want you to see here that they're not asking about the resources which are present in the ocean. If they're talking about resources present in the ocean, you need to talk about both continental shelf, slope, everything. But I want you people to talk mostly about the continental shelf, which is also your neretic reserves. That is, they are off the shore resources. And these resources, you have to write what all are present. You know that you have terrigenous resources that is coming from the earth, where you will have boulders, granules, correct? What all you will have? Sand, monazite sand, silt, clay. You will have red mud, green mud, blue mud, right? All these are present. Along with this, 
right you will have biogenous reserves like shells pearls fossil fuels gas hydrates just we saw right you may have sorry you may have coral polyps or coral reefs as well very less amount of hydrogenous sediments are present here so if you can write this it should be fine what i i'll just repeat the last line very less resources of hydrogenous resources are present and cosmogenous is almost absent in this particular part the next question that we need to focus is about the petroleum chemicals and petrochemical investment regions in india identify their distribution and explain their main characteristics now when you look at this question the significance of petroleum chemical and petrochemical investment regions in india is see india is one of the largest importer of oil and natural gas similarly india is also one of the largest exporter of refined minerals so when you look at almost all these coastal region i'll come to the distribution now what are these you will be having right refineries present almost around all the scs that are there in most of the scs areas they are planning for at least one refinery so that the oil natural gas or any other things that is required for the industries nearby would be available here we are looking for two industries one is petroleum industries another one is petrochemical industries and these will be associated with scs so government is telling either you will have this pc pir industry separately which acts as scs or wherever you have scs you may get one or two such refineries right and these refineries if we have it may help in providing the resources that are required for or raw materials required for other industries and remember most of these industries they may be also known as anchor industries or base industries because once you have such industries around these industries other type of industries associated with this for example chemical industries fertilizer industries right all this will be surrounding these petrochemical industries we may also call them in geographical terms as growth poles or growth centers where along with this industries other industries may come up which keeps on expanding or spreading across so this is one important thing that we all need to focus and the next important thing is its distribution remember mostly it is associated with scs along with this you need to talk about odisha you need to talk about kolkata you need to talk about like you know nagapatnam chennai all these areas where your traditional refineries are there now when you just open where are the petroleum refineries present you can clearly understand that most of the major ports are associated with petroleum imports and in all those petroleum imports areas you will definitely observe what we call as these industries fine and it is mostly associated with allowing investments in such a way that every promoter who is there if he comes up with the refineries present i'm talking about their main characteristics right if the refinery is by what we call as like you know the person who is trying to promote it the external infrastructure and other things that are required like roads railway networks pipelines supply chains all this would be provided by the central and the state government so it's a joint venture of private and public state governments have to identify these and they have to give the viabilities of these projects as well remember these type of questions may come either in geography or economic geography so just be prepared with both these types of questions as well so guys the next 
test would be on important geophysical phenomena such as earthquakes, tsunami, volcanic activity, cyclones, etc. And the sources are given. So guys, again, the new course is starting soon. Prelims come mains batch, optional batches, online classes, offline classes, tests. Everything is available. Just try to make the best use of it.